Hello, my name is Carol Aldis and I'm the project leader for the STEM Industry Engagement Project called Bridging the Gap. Welcome to our session on the development of pre-service teachers' conceptualisation of science as a human endeavour. Let me introduce you to our project members or team members, and they are Aidan Cornelius Bill and Abby Sesterka. Aidan and Abby are our project and research officers within the project. Aidan's going to share with us um, about the structure and function of the Bridging the Gap program and the role and relevance of an industry experience. Abby's going to talk to us about the relationship between science as a human endeavour and an industry experience, discussing the qualitative findings of focus group interviews from pre-service teachers. I will then follow up with the quantitative findings from the questionnaires that students answered pre and post their industry experience. Hello, my name is Aidan Cornelius Bell. I'm a research officer for the Bridging the Gap project and a learning designer at Flinders University. I'd like to start by acknowledging that the land I'm speaking to you from is the land of the Ghana people, land which was never ceded. I'd like to acknowledge elders past and present and any indigenous colleagues with us today. I'm gonna to talk to you about three things. The structure of the Bridging the Gap program, science as a human endeavor and pre-service teachers understanding of that, and the relevance of an industry experience in this, in this sense and in the current time. So briefly, and I won't labor this because I know Carol has spoken to this before. The project aim looked at getting pre-service teachers to visit an industry so that they could better teach science to their high school students. In essence, what we wanted to do was bridge the gap between knowledge of science and its application in society. We wanted a partnering approach. We wanted to sort of use some of the best bits of will with some of the best bits of short form industry engagement. And so what we did was we considered STEM as this sort of meta-disciplinary space, a space where um, different backgrounds and different areas of learning and understanding come together to do different things. And with that as a frame, we wanted to think about what kind of experience we should provide to pre-service teachers so that they can understand what that looks like in society and therefore better teach that as a result. What we ended up with was a STEM industry engagement experience, a short um, framework that allowed pre-service teachers to visit an industry to identify some of the ways that science, technology, engineering and maths come together, look at some of those knowledges and discipline understandings together and then pull those apart and look at what kind of learning experiences students might embark on in order to better unpack that and look at that. So we needed a will model that was pretty light and pragmatic in this space. We needed to be able to purposefully integrate theory and practice knowledge um, and look at that in a workplace environment in a very short amount of time. We provided students with the opportunities to develop understanding of applied discipline and work skills in a range of industries prior to their work then out in education. Right? And our ultimate contention from doing this and, and working in this way is that we need to deploy this kind of model, these short form visits at the very least in more disciplines in pre-service teacher education. So not just in science as it sits for us, but to enable pre-service teachers to have some more industry experience to see what real world application of these knowledge and skill bases looks like. I think then you can kind of infer why we would want to work with industry in order to broaden our pre-service teacher understandings of these kinds of things. So they bring fresh ideas, there's sort of a broader perspective that, that emerges out of this relationship or this, um, this way of working with industry. It gives some context to the learning that those teachers will then design. Uh, and it also builds those soft skills. But I think most importantly here is the development of an understanding in a pre-service teacher of science as a human endeavor, particularly borrowing from the Australian curriculum um, in those two substrands of science as a human endeavor with a particular emphasis on the use and influence of science, right? A theme that runs through the Australian curriculum asking us as teachers to look at how students interact with and understand science as it is applied in all of its various ways, including lives and work. 
And so that connection between the knowledge and skills being applied in an industry um, then relates to how you design learning experiences for students. So working with a range of industry partners so that we could give sort of a, a pretty broad based understanding to pre-service teachers about what's going on out in industry or out in the real world, um, we created this model, which we think is a, a relatively robust way of getting pre-service teachers to experience uh, the way that science is working in, in industry or the way that STEM is working in industry. So they visit for four hours, they go with a critical headset on trying to identify the ways that science, technology, engineering and maths are being used in that industry. They talk to a whole range of different professionals and they get their understanding about how it is that their learning, the, the professionals learning, is, taking, is being taken into the real world or into that industry with that person. They come back to us here at Flinders, so they work with internal organisation units to go through a design thinking and breakdown process to analyse some of the ways that that science, technology and engineering and maths discipline knowledge is being used. And then they go back to the industry and communicate with the industry about what they found, the kinds of learning that they will now design for their students based on the industry experience that they've had, um, and they forge those connections into the future. Ultimately, the pre-service teachers develop a unit of work around the sciences of human endeavor understandings. In order to facilitate this, we also needed a, a sort of a novel approach based on um, sharing digital skills, digital understandings around this space, right? We wanted our pre-service teachers to be able to share with each other the knowledge they gathered, the resources that they've developed. And so to do that, we created a bespoke platform for Bridging the Gap students. This connected with our institution's learning management system and allowed them to communicate and collaborate around the kinds of learning they had done in those industries, which further facilitated connections. And finally, in this sort of post, um, slowly post-COVID world, um, there's, there's sort of a devastating derailment to a lot of the way that education is done and, of course, much of the world. But this space is also filled with possibility to rethink industry experiences, and that's something that we're going to have to do as a project as we move forward. So the project, as described so far, offers some compelling results, and my colleagues will talk about that more in just a moment. But now we have these real opportunities to rethink and perhaps apply something like a problem-based learning approach to real-world pre-service teacher science education, particularly through the curriculum studies topics. What we really want to do, and what we've been trying to create in this program, is authentic, embedded learning opportunities for students, both pre-service teachers and their eventual high school students, through a partnership approach with industry. And we know that there are a lot of models for supporting that. But what we know is missing from many of those models is the way that you connect the industry and the pre-service teacher, right? How do you bring together problem-based approaches, um, understandings of science in the real world with the curriculum and learning and teaching that happens in a pre-service teacher education classroom? And that's something we want to keep thinking about. It's a space we want to open up for discussion and we'd appreciate any of your thoughts. And of course, in the post-COVID-19 world, we're going to have a lot of additional challenges in working on um, getting students out on industry placements. So any thoughts are much appreciated. Now I'll hand over to my colleagues to talk about the data and results so far. Thank you, Carolyn Aiden. My name is Abby Sisterka, and I'm a research officer on the Bridging the Gap program, and I also lecture in Indonesian studies at Flinders University. I'm going to be talking on two things today. Uh, firstly, the relationship between science as a human endeavour and industry in the Bridging the Gap context, and also our qualitative findings so far. One thing that we're all quite accustomed to in the education space, no matter what sector we work in, is change. Australian governments tend to take quite a legacy approach, and with new governments and new ministers, we see new reforms, we see a lot of changes, we see innovations, and with that is a bit of a, a proliferation of jargon, for better or for worse. Um, one of the things we do in initial teacher education is work with pre-service teachers to unpack that and to help them create meaning from it. And in this case, we're looking at science as a human endeavour, which is one of the three strands in the Australian curriculum, along with science understanding and science inquiry. And science as a human endeavour has become quite a key feature of the Australian curriculum in the science context and attracted a fair bit of uh, attention. What we essentially do in the Bridging the Gap program <clears throat> is provide a work integrated learning experience uh, where students can see this uh, application of science as a human endeavour in industry, in a place that it makes sense, 
in a place where they're able to draw a lot of meaning from it. This is a work integrated learning experience that is beyond what they would usually receive in an initial teacher education program, and you know, being their teacher placements, their, their classroom practicum, um, and allows them to investigate their curriculum studies area uh, more deeply. To borrow from my colleague Janice Arell, who has done a lot of work in the wheel space, uh, she talks a lot about the didactic nature of higher education, where uh, we see what Jan terms as the sage on the stage, uh, whereas with work integrated learning, when it's facilitated well, the teaching comes from what Jan calls the guide on the side. And the research overwhelmingly tells us that this is a really effective way to facilitate transformative learning experiences and innovative learning outcomes that are way beyond what we can deliver in a classroom context. And we've seen through the Bridging the Gap program that students, through engaging with industries that range from sort of research institutes to robotics and aerospace, to what might be seen as a, a more pedestrian uh, field like power and gas delivery, uh, this enhances their understanding in, in really unique ways when they see how science as a human endeavour manifests in the real world, um, and particularly in those kinds of industries uh, that they take for granted, like infrastructure delivery. They see the complexity of the problems that these industries deal with um, to deliver daily services. To look at the qualitative findings from the Bridging the Gap program, we have run um, data collection alongside each of our cohorts, and this has been both quantitative and qualitative. Uh, Carol will have a look at the quant data in a moment. In terms of the qualitative data, we've been running focus group sessions with the pre-service teachers, both pre and post their industry engagement. So looking at the industry engagement as an intervention of sorts. These uh, focus group and interview sessions have formed uh, an evaluative function so that we can continue to develop and improve upon the Bridging the Gap program each year. <clears throat> and we also look at things like their expectations, their perceived benefits, um, the benefit to their future students that they see, their uh, conceptualisations around the role of things like creativity and ethics in STEM teaching and learning, the impact that it has on their pedagogic practice and um, their motivation for engagement in an industry experience. Uh, furthermore, we've also done some data collection by following those students into their professional experience placements and talking with their mentor teachers and the students that they work with. Um, that kind of data collection is obviously um, more complex than interviewing the pre-service teachers in the university, and we hope to sort of build on that data set in years to come to develop a deeper understanding. <clears throat> in terms of us investigating pre-service teachers' conceptualisation of science as a human endeavour, what we've seen is quite a clear progression of their understanding over years. In our early cohorts, when asked about their understanding of science as a human endeavour, they had a tendency to talk about it in relatively narrow terms. That's not to say that they didn't have a good understanding of it. They, from the get-go, they had uh, quite a clear understanding of what science as a human endeavour meant. Um, we have had, you know, uh, the good fortune of having some extremely high quality students through the Bridging the Gap program. Um, and they have had a firm understanding of science as a human endeavour, but they've talked about it mainly in terms of what it means, in terms of a definition. <clears throat> as time went on, what we found in those focus groups, and still drawing from the same questions, is that students had a tendency to contextualise that information more. So not only did they talk about what science as a human endeavour was, but they talked about its real world application and how they had seen that manifest through their industry engagement. In our more recent cohorts, an interesting development was that they talked on a deeper level about how they planned to, imply, to apply that to their own teaching practice um, as pre-service teachers and in the future as graduate teachers. So they were more interrogative around the experience that they had had. They looked at their own experience in the classroom as students, and they talked a lot about how the, they would use this information and this uh, new context to enhance their teaching as pre-service teachers and as graduate teachers. So we saw that quite clear progression from um, concept to context 
to application to their teaching practice. And that's something that we hope to continue to collect data around and uh, continue to see the progression in our pre-service teacher cohorts. Uh, at this point, I'm going to hand over to Carol, who will look at the quantitative findings. Thank you. Thanks, Abby. I'm going to share uh, some of the findings from the quantitative study. Um, a purpose-built instrument was designed to tap into students' uh, creativity in STEM, their teaching and learning in STEM, their view of STEM and their confidence in STEM around the industry engagement. And each of these dimensions actually taps into an aspect of science as a human endeavour. So the creativity in STEM and teaching and learning maps to the nature and development of science, whereas their view of STEM and their confidence in STEM actually maps to the use and influence of science. 58% of the cohort were female with a mean age of 24.6 years. There were 60 respondents post the industry engagement compared with 70 uh, prior to the industry engagement. This slide provides some uh, sample statements for each of the dimensions that were being measured together with their reliability. Uh, the sample statement for the view of STEM says, a STEM industry placement has given me insight into how scientists apply knowledge in a real world context. And if we have a look at this graph um, where the percentage of a of agreement or mean percentage agreement pre to post is plotted, you can see that the mean percentage agreement post is higher than the mean percentage agreement pre or prior to the industry engagement. If we now look at the size of the difference pre to post, the scale which has the largest change in mean percentage agreement is that for the view of STEM followed by creativity in STEM, followed by confidence in STEM, followed by um, the teaching and learning scale. This graph um, shows graphically the information that was provided in the preceding table and indicating or highlighting that the difference was, the difference pre to post was in a positive direction. This slide um, shows you the information shared by mentor teachers around their perception of student teachers' units of work. You'll note from this table that there was 100% agreement uh, amongst the teachers that the students themselves produced excellent units of work, that they were of an excellent standard. 94% of them indicated that the units of work made proficient links to science as a human endeavour and also that they provided elements of creative thinking in the tasks that they designed for their students to do. This graph um, plots um, the, the four cohorts that we've had in the study. Um, you'll see that in the first round of the study that students' confidence actually went down following the industry engagement um, compared with what it was prior to going into the industry engagement. We learnt a lot from the first round of the um, project and were able to uh, better scaffold the experience for students in the following um, cohorts. Um, uh, the combined cohorts is the figure shown in, um, in green. So to sum, pre-service science teachers who engaged in a Bridging the Gap project year over year showed an enhanced engagement with an understanding of science as a human endeavour as measured in quantitative terms by their lived experience in, in their view of STEM, in their creativity in STEM, in their teaching and learning in STEM, in their confidence, and also by their mental teachers' perceptions of the student teacher's unit of work. The focus group data point to pre-service teachers change in thinking from viewing science in abstract theoretical terms towards one of an in-depth personal appreciation of how science relates to their own lives, of how um, 
there are authentic interactions between science, society and industry and, a pre and a, also an appreciation of being so much better prepared and of having practical examples of what he or she could do to be creative in the science classroom. So there's been a shift from a conceptual or theoretical understanding of science as a human endeavour to a, a contextual understanding uh, to finally how that contextual understanding could be translated into the classroom and into their pedagogy. I'll never forget, um, and I'll finish with this quote, of a student teacher saying to me, I get it now, last year I was not connecting industry with science as a human endeavour. Now I realise that industry is science as a human endeavour.